I'm talking to who's the Foreign Minister of the Bahamas, and he shared what Commonwealth nations want to happen next. I think at the moment, CARICOM countries want the conversation to start about it. There appears to be even a reluctance to have the conversation start. Many of the institutions in the UK have already conceded the point of apology. The British government isn't quite there. But at this time, the discussion needs to be had about the history of this and the ill effects of what happened uh, after slavery was abolished, which continue to affect our societies today. Downing Street, Sir Keir Starmer's team, They've insisted this subject is not on the agenda at this summit. How are you then going to change that, even starting to have that conversation? There are two paragraphs which now uh, are the subject of dispute in the um, in the draft uh, communique. Uh, just left a session a few minutes ago, and uh, there are paragraphs 22 and 23. The single line that they're arguing about is reparatory justice or a declaration on reparatory justice. Seems innocuous enough to us uh, because really what should happen is there should be an apology and a commitment to reparations. But the way the paragraphs are structured is at the moment is to simply call for this discussion to take place on reparatory justice and not even that concession can be made. So it's going upstairs at the moment unless something happens overnight dramatically, the leaders themselves are going to have to be a part of getting this settled. And it seems unusual to us because you've got the Labour Party in power. And this, we thought, was something that the Conservative Party in the UK would be the uh, progenitor of, and that Labour would certainly change its position on this. And particularly since you have an Afro-British uh, man as the Foreign Secretary, to put him in a position where he's advancing a position that no reparations, no discussion on reparations. So I think a very frank conversation has to be had on this. And I think eventually people will come around, but the discussion must be had. But I suppose, what, what are you going to do if you can't? I mean, are, are you viewing this as disrespectful? You're talking about David Lammy there as the Foreign Secretary. What can you do to, to force the issue? First of all, you have to be hopeful that people come around in the end. Uh, there's not going to be a uh, big uh, falling out about this issue. But the principle must be established that the conversation needs to be had and some decision has to be made. How do you go forward with dealing with the issue of reparations? So once you broach the subject, it may take a while for people to come around, but come around they will. There are several institutions in your own country, including the Anglican Church, that have uh, shifted their positions dramatically uh, within the last decade or so. So given Mr. Kerr's uh, work uh, before he became prime minister, given Mr. Lamy's position before he got this uh, job that he has now, they bring their individual consciences to this job. And I think eventually they'll come around to the position. But just looking at what Sakir Starmer has said, he said, you know, he wants to focus on the future. That, that's where he wants his focus rather than what will end up being, quote, very, very long, endless discussions about reparations on the past. Of course, slavery is abhorrent to everyone. And he goes on to say, but I think from my point of view, I'd rather roll up my sleeves and work with them, talking of the other countries, on the current future facing challenges rather than spend a lot of time on the past. That's pretty clear. So it would seem. But the future is, how do you educate the people of the uh, of the Caribbean? How do you educate them? Cost money to do so. How do you repair the, um, the um, infrastructure, the social institutions, all of those things? All of those things cost money. Do, do you have a so figure? Do you have a, if I may, just, just at this point, do you have a figure in mind? No, no, there's no figure in mind. That's why you have to have the discussion, because you have to formulate a basis upon which things are settled. He seems to have no appetite for this. There's been nothing that's been said by his team, by him directly, by anybody in the room that is going to, to seem like I'm this has changed. That's always a starting position. But this is the Commonwealth. They're arguing for change. You have the monarch who says there needs to be a discussion and change. So it's only a matter of time before his position changes. I am confident of it. I mean, just in terms of the apology and and where we are with that, you know, looking back at what actually, you know, has been said, you know, do, do you feel you've actually had uh, enough of a, an official apology? Do you think the king should be apologising at this Commonwealth summit? Well, I don't, I don't want to speak to that specifically. I think an apology Why is not? necessary. The British government has to decide who gives that apology. But the British state was involved in the transatlantic slave trade. There needs to be a formal apology from the country, just as other European countries have done. Uh, it's only because I was looking back at, 
what Tony Blair had said in, in 2006. And, and, and he did say uh, at that time, the bicentenary, bicentenary offers us a chance not to say how profoundly shameful the slave trade was and the condemning, but to also express our deep sorrow that it ever happened. And then again in 2007, he said, we are sorry and I say it again now. That was a, a, at a news conference. King Charles has, has, has expressed great sorrow and regret, but uh, you still don't feel that enough has been said officially. The word is apologize. That's the word. If either of those things don't happen, either the discussion of reparations doesn't begin and, and an apology doesn't happen, neither of which look like they're on the table at the moment, will you feel and will your, your colleagues in this way feel profoundly disrespected by the UK? I don't want to describe the profound disrespect. What I would say is this. It's a disappointment that we've come this far where there's an argument about the Commonwealth evolving into a new and different organization that an apology cannot be issued, which fundamentally recognizes the wrong that was done in the past and acknowledges the humanity of those people who were affected by the slave trade. It's a simple matter. It can be done one sentence, one line. Why do you not think the UK is issuing an apology? I think because it's been uh, expressed mainly in money terms. And when you start talking about uh, the charges on the exchequer and the expenses which the country now faces, that's a difficult proposition that any politician has to sell to uh, voters. That's why the conversation has to be had, because it's not just a matter of money. It is things like respect. It is acknowledging the past was a wrong which needs to be corrected, and then moving on from there. And some of your own institutions have dealt with, for example, by offering scholarships to Caribbean students. That's one way that's been done, for example, in the United States with uh, Georgetown University that uh, also was a, a part of this uh, this nefarious uh, slave trade. And, and, um, and if you say sorry, you, know, you are then liable in that way with, with that conversation being linked to the apology. That's right. Absolutely. I think that's it. Just, just to say on a, on a practical point, I recognise you want to start having the conversation about how this might work. People will have, you know, very strong views and a lot of emotions as well tie, tied up in this. But just in terms of who should pay, I mean, one judge, a United Nations judge has calculated it could be £18 trillion pounds that the UK owes for historical involvement in slavery across 14 countries. But who should pay in the UK? Uh, if you look at the fact that certain figures have it around 15 16 percent of british taxpayers are migrants should they have to pay reparations there are those from the windrush generation there are those who descend from slaves w would you do you have a view at this point or, as to how and who should pay reparations well, well i don't think you disaggregate from the british government it's the british government as an institution it's the united kingdom as an institution that was involved in the slave trade so that's the entity now you know at one point caricom countries had been speaking to a British law firm with regard to formulating an action in the British courts to have this matter adjudicated. So at the end of the day, perhaps that's where it's headed as well. Frederick Mitchell there, the Foreign Minister of the Bahamas, saying what he is, his view and what he's been talking about with other Commonwealth nations, Commonwealth nations of what he wants to happen next at that summit in Samoa where the Prime Minister is. 23 minutes past eight.